All right, we are live. Welcome. Uh, we're going to do a little video on graphing, solving, and inverses. So I just wanted to really quick display uh, from our reference sheet the graphs of sine, cosine, tangent, and cotangent with the relevant formulas. The period is 2 pi over b for sine and cosine, secant and cosecant functions. And the period is pi over b for tangent and cotangent functions. So I just wanted to have that be the first slide so you could pause, rewind the video, and reference the sheet. Or if you're just doing this with your reference sheet hanging out next to you, you could use that as well. So first, let's take a look at this uh, tangent function. Let's graph y equals 2 tangent of 4 theta. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back here and sneak a peek at the tangent function. So my lead coefficient here for y equals 2 tan of 4 theta is positive. So I'm just going to draw what looks to be like a parent tangent function. There's the origin. It's increasing. Now I'm not going to worry about uh, what the scale is on my graph and where the asymptotes are located until I now go back and, and sort of work through the details of uh, like finding the period and looking at the coefficients that are in the problem. So I can just start with drawing a, just a basic one cycle of the tangent function. So my period is a uh, period formula here is pi over b and in this function b is 4. So that means the period will be pi over 4. All right now period's pi over 4. So that means that the distance between the asymptotes that's going to be the period so in this case, the period is pi over 4. That's the distance between these asymptotes. So that means that one of the asymptotes is going to be at pi over 8, the other at negative pi over 8. Because an eighth of a pi plus another eighth of a pi equals a quarter of a pi, or pi over 4. So you've got to be a little bit careful with thinking about what the period is and sort of spacing out uh, where your asymptotes are uh, in regards to uh, like making that all work out with where the origin's located. So what am I gonna do for the vertical scale? Well, the lead coefficient's a two, so I'm just gonna scale vertically by uh, factors of two, so two, four, six, eight, up at the top there, negative eight on the bottom. And where are the asymptotes located? So on my graph, I just see two asymptotes, x equals plus or minus, uh, plus or minus pi over eight. Now, I could keep the graph going. I mean, I just drew one cycle. So I would also have asymptotes at plus or minus 3 pi over 8, plus or minus 5 pi over 8, plus or minus 7 pi over 8, so on and so on and so on. Um, but I, I just drew one cycle. If I wanted to keep the graph going, you know, I could draw I could draw another cycle of the tangent function there, but it, that would go sort of, the full cycle would go off of the, the coordinate plane that I've provided. So one cycle uh, will suffice most of the time when you're drawing these functions. So let's check out a uh, cotangent graph. So really quick before I do this, I'm, I'm gonna pop back to that, uh, to that slide with all of the graphs. Okay, so here's the parent function. Here's just y equals cotan theta. Got an asymptote at zero, uh, and the function decreases over its domain. So drop some asymptotes here. And the cotangent function decreases, so I can draw it in like so. But then, hold on a second, what's the lead coefficient here of the cotangent function we're supposed to be graphing? We're graphing y equals negative cotangent of theta over 2. Lead coefficient is negative 1. That's actually going to reflect the graph over the x-axis. So actually, the cotangent function is going to be increasing over its domain. It's going to look like so. So that's what I got to watch out for is your lead coefficient positive or negative because that's going to affect whether the graph increases or decreases. Uh, if the lead coefficient is negative, you're going to have to reflect that parent function over the x axis. Okay, now what do we got for the b value? This is the cotangent of theta over 2, which is the same as the cotangent of 1 half theta. So b, b is actually 1 half in this case. So the period is going to be pi over b, which will be pi over 1 half. And if I reduce pi over 1 half, I get 2 pi. 
So that means that the distance between the asymptotes has to be 2 pi. So that means one asymptote is at uh, 2 pi. I've got that original asymptote at 0, and the other asymptote is at negative 2 pi. So uh, when I go to list out my asymptotes, uh, the equations will be x equals 0. Got that one asymptote right in the middle of the graph there. Uh, and then x equals plus or minus 2 pi. And again, you can keep the graph going, and you get asymptotes at plus or minus 4 pi, plus or minus 6 pi, plus or minus 8 pi, et cetera, et cetera. But you just have to draw, you know, one or one or two cycles will suffice uh, for drawing the graph. All right, so now let's ramp this up. Let's do uh, let's do a cosecant function. We're going to graph y equals two cosecant of pi x. So I'm going to do that on the uh, right coordinate plane here. Two cosecant of pi x. On this coordinate plane on the left here, I'm actually going to graph y equals two sine of pi x. So why am I going to graph a sine function before I graph the cosecant function? Well, it's because the sine and the cosecant function are multiplicative inverses of each other. They are reciprocals of each other. So 2 cosecant of pi x is really the same as 2 divided by the sine of pi x. So before you graph the cosecant function itself, you're going to want to graph the corresponding sine function, and then you're going to want to look at the reciprocal of, of that sine function. That's going to be the best, uh, the best way to do this. So I'm going to graph a sine graph again. You could check out that reference sheet if you forget the general shape of a sine function. So there's my quick sketch there. Now i got to fill in the scale. So it looks like uh, I'm graphing 2 sine of pi x. So the range will be negative 2 to 2. The amplitude's 2. That lead coefficient, the absolute value of that lead coefficient is the amplitude. Uh, the period is 2 pi over b for sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant functions. And in this case, b is 2. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. B is pi. So the period will be 2 pi over pi. The pi is cancel, and the period is 2. All right, so there is a um, graph of y equals 2 sine of pi x. So now I want to use that graph to graph the corresponding cosecant function to graph y equals 2 cosecant of pi x. So the key idea here is that since sine and cosecant are reciprocals, wherever the sine function is 0, the cosecant function is undefined. So I'm going to look at that sine graph, and wherever that sine graph has a 0, the cosecant function will have a vertical asymptote, because the cosecant function will not be defined there. And furthermore, wherever the sine graph gets close to the x-axis, since the cosecant function is the reciprocal of the sine function, the cosecant function will be far away from the y-axis. So I can draw in my cosecant graph. Like so. I'm going to use the exact same scaling. Oh, sorry. That's the wrong slide there by mistake. That's not a negative 2, it's positive 2. Oh, sorry. Keeps kicking over the wrong slide. So, where are my asymptotes here? Got asymptotes, vertical asymptotes at 0, x equals 0, x equals plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. Again, if you kept the graph going and you graphed some more cycles, you'd get asymptotes of plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, et cetera, et cetera. And I've got the range of uh, negative infinity to negative 2, union uh, 2 to infinity. That should be a 2, not a negative 2. Change that. Typo. So there we go. Graph to sine function, graph the corresponding cosecant function. And let's move on to look at some solving. So, I want to solve a trig equation. Uh, this uh, part of class, and when people took the assessment on this, this gave some people some trouble because they weren't using the graphs effectively, I feel like. So I'm going to talk about sort of the best way to use graphs to solve these equations. So we want to solve 
uh, sine of x equals negative 2 thirds over the interval negative 3 pi is less than x is less than negative pi. So I've sort of sketched how we can set this up uh, using Desmos. So I popped open Desmos, and, and you can do this on your graphing calculator as well. Uh, I want to graph the left side and the right side of the equation. So I want to get a graph going. I want to graph y equals sine of x. So I've got that going on in Desmos. I got y equals sine of x. And then I also want to graph y equals negative 2 thirds. So I've got that going on in Desmos. And then, and then I just want to see where uh, those two equations overlap. I want to look for the points of intersection. And those points of intersection will have x values that tell me solutions to the equation. That is sort of the logic here. Now here's the thing though, is that I'm solving these equations over very specific intervals. So in this case, I'm solving the equation over the interval negative 3 pi uh, to negative pi. So that's going to tell me how to make my window. That negative 3 pi, that's the minimum x value I want to be looking at for my window. And the negative pi, that's the maximum x value that I want to be looking at in the window. So in Desmos, uh, when you hit the wrench, that pops open the options here. So you can see for my x values, I'm going from negative 3 pi to negative pi. And for my y values, I said negative 2 to 2. I mean, those are the values that you're going to have to play with a little bit. You just need to be able to see the whole graph. I mean, since one of the values was negative 2 thirds, I just, you know, negative 2 thirds is in between negative 2 and 2. So that, that's a fine window. Sometimes you'll have to play around with the uh, with y values so that you can see both of the graphs and see all the intersection points. And the other thing to notice here is that the interval is in radians, so make sure you have radians selected. Uh, if you were solving the equation and it, it, it was asking you, it gave you an interval in degrees, then make sure you have degrees selected. So you might have to change modes. Then the nice part about Desmos, you can just touch the intersection points to get the answers. So there's two answers in this interval. The first one is x equals negative 8.695. The second is x equals negative 7.013. So you're just looking for the x values of the points of intersection. Those x values are the solution, solutions of the equation over the given interval. So you could do that on the calculator, uh, you know, and just use second trace intersect. But it's easier on Desmos. It's easier to touch the screen to get the points of intersection and whatnot. And everything's in color. You can see that you can make each graph a different color. It's just, I feel like it's easier. Last but not least, uh, you got to know how to evaluate inverse trig functions without a calculator, with just using sort of the unit circle and your knowledge of the trig functions. So let's say we had to evaluate something like uh, the inverse tangent of 1 over root 3. Now notice that's the same just notationally. You could have also said... Uh, like what's the arctan of 1 over root 3? The arctangent function is the inverse tangent function. They're, they're the exact same thing. So whether you say tan inverse of 1 over root 3 or the arctangent of 1 over root 3, those, those are the same. Okay, so the input here, the 1 over root 3, those are the, or the that's the side ratio. That's the ratio of sides. The output, what I'm looking for, is the angle. So I'm looking for what angle creates a side ratio of, of uh, 1 over root 3. Or 1's the opposite side and root 3 is the, the adjacent side. So the inverse trig functions, they're, they're giving you information about sides. They're asking you for the angle. OK, so now just a quick refresher of how this works on the unit circle. Tangent of theta, opposite over adjacent. We know that. So Katoa. Another way you can think of tangent of theta is it's y over x. So that means that if I'm looking on the unit circle, I want to look at a ratio of y to x that's 1 to root 3. So that would happen right here. So my answer would be pi over 6 radians, or 30 degrees. 
again, because you you have to give the angle. So just if you're giving the angle in degrees, don't forget the the degree the degree sign. So if you if you answered in degrees, make sure you give a little you know degree sign above the thirty degrees. Or you could answer in radians. You just say pi over six. Either it would be good. Now the key here is that you're giving the closest angle to zero. And you provide some sort of work. So I'm just writing a quick, the point really quick and showing what the coordinates would be on the unit circle, how I would figure out that the, the arctan of 1 over 3 is, is pi over 6. And you're looking for the closest angle to 0. So if you had something like, let's look at another example. Typically, the negative values were giving people some trouble. So if you had something like, uh, What's the arc sine of negative root 3 over 2? So you know that the, the value of the, the sine is negative root 3 over 2, and you're looking for what the angle is that produces a sine of negative root 3 over 2. And you want the angle to be as close to 0 as possible. So on the unit circle, sine is the y value of the coordinate. So there's a couple of places on the unit circle where the value of the sine is negative root 3 over 2. One's at 240, one's at 300. But you want the angle that's closest to 0. So to get from 0 to 240, or 4 pi over 3, you start at 0, you have to go all the way around the unit circle, boom, to 4 pi over 3. You'd have to traverse that whole distance. If you went from 0 to 300, you'd have to go all the way around here. Boom. But the shortest distance to travel would be if you started at 0 radians or 0 degrees and you traveled clockwise. Boom. You'd only have to travel that far. So that arc that I've sort of highlighted, that is the smallest angle, the closest angle to 0 that produces a sine value of negative root 3 over 2. So what is that angle? So that would be 60 degrees. But I'm traveling clockwise around the unit circle. So the answer would be negative 60 degrees, since I'm starting at 0 and moving clockwise. Or, or I could say negative pi over 3. I was answering in radians. My work here, I'm just sketching my point. My point would be right here, 1 half, comma, negative root 3 over 2. That's the sine value. So you're in quadrant 4, but I'm not going to answer 5 pi over 3 or 300 because that would have me going a long, a very long distance, counterclockwise around the unit circle. It's going to be quicker if I go clockwise from 0. I only have to travel 60 degrees to get to the point on the unit circle that has the sine value of negative root 3 over 2. So I hope some of that helps. Um, and if you have any questions, just come hunt me down after school or ask in class, and I will see you all soon. No mastery at that. Keep. I know how.